Okay, the recording has started. Uh, once again, this is Brian Wilson. I'm joined by Henry Howard today. Uh, September the 12th, already moving into mid-September. I know Henry's uh, children are, are back in school. Uh, my college girl is back up in Michigan. So uh, life life goes on. Good to see everyone. We're, we're thrilled that you can be with us today. Uh, I am going to turn it over to Henry to uh, to begin this session, and uh, let's uh, let's pick it up, Henry. All right. Uh, thanks so much, Brian, and welcome everybody again. I'm Henry Howard. I'm the director of client services here at Market Structure Edge. Um, I like to do this. We have a, a number of new people that we've added to um, to the call today, so I'm going to take you. What I tend to do um, is really a top-down approach on market structure edge and i talked about in my desk note on wednesdays i always write the wednesday desk note um is you know that's that looking for confidence and looking for that strong level of confidence when i'm in a trade um and you know to that point i feel like the reason we share this data a lot of the reason we have this data is to is to be able to have a high level of confidence in our moves um you know what i'm really looking for um, from a top down is I'm looking at broad market sentiment. I'm um, I'm looking at the context and I'm looking at, you know, even the sector. And then finally, I'm looking at the name and I'm saying, can I trade that name? Um, I'm going to take us into our big tech por portfolio in a moment. And we're going to look at some of the short volumes and saying, well, why is this moving and why is this not moving? Um, and then finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some volatility metrics and some stuff uh, I don't want to steal from Brian that I'm sure he's going to talk about too because it was in his notes. So let's get started here. Those of you who are new, um, this is our dashboard, obviously. Um, the very first thing we do is we look at broad market sentiment. So broad market sentiment is our, our metric. Uh, our, our level base of five is buying and selling. Obviously, our red line is um, what we like to think of as sort of, um, you know, overbought or nearing, you know, I don't want to say overbought, but the probability after we get over the red line, and especially as we push into this seven number, um, it's likely that we're going to have a little bit of a pullback here. Um, and then obviously the green line, as we approach the green line, uh, the probability uh, of buys at the green line are very high. So that's what we're looking at. I'm looking at um, you know this, this waning uh, demand over the last few days. Um, but also I'm looking at this short covering. I think on Wednesday we started covering some of the shorts. So to me, that short is it's an indication that there's a, a, um, a less of a d degree of risk perception in the market. So when that starts to get covered, um, there's, a, there's a higher probability that we're going to see some uh, buying and we're going to see maybe the dip. Um, you know, all of this is under the caveat of context. I mentioned our, our CPI, our, our price numbers that came out yesterday and today. Um, so that's the first thing we look at is broad market sentiment and short volume on the uh, uh, as a whole that's the s p state street s p 500. um the second thing i look at is the number of components in momentum these are default edge portfolios everybody has these two portfolios and then these two portfolios if you're coming from the ibkr side or if you're on a trial you're only seeing these daily trading ideas um what i'm looking at in momentum and low volatility is the number of components each day. So momentum is, mo is the momentum portfolio populating with new names. That's a great indication to me that we're having an upward move, that that thing's going to continue. The moment this momentum portfolio starts to wane, um, you know, the power of sort of, you know, the wind comes out of our sails. Similar to low volatility, um, I think I mentioned this last week, um, the number of companies in low volatility give us an indication of hey is the money where's the money moving it is it moving into momentum or is it moving into these low volatility sort of safer names um where's that shift occurring um and so that's the first thing that we that you know the first two things that we like to look at the third thing is um you know i think we've talked about the the, the number you know the level of trading volume that's attributed to big tech um, so I'll come in here. I love to sort this portfolio in a lot of different ways. Um, I think on, Mon on Wednesday it was, you know, let's just look at the market cap and let's just look at these top three names. Um, you know, NVIDIA, I I I'm going to get to this. Uh, let's we'll, we'll peek at NVIDIA right now. Obviously, NVIDIA is up with the market today, about two and a half percent. But what I want to take a look at is this is um, 
a historically high uh, short volume for NVIDIA. Um, demand is sort of in the in the trough here. Um, but let's look at our volatility number. 5.3 is the average daily volatility. So when we look at these things, um, you know, it's going to bounce within that number. And so when we, um, you know, talk about names and what the market's going to do on a daily basis, um, we're not looking to pull all 5% out in a day. I'm looking at the right opportunity to enter this name um, one way or another. The other way that I like to look at this portfolio um, is just through our supply. Um, you know, Google at 23% is, you know, historically pretty low. So what I encourage people to do is all, get a really, get a handful of names that you get really familiar with, understand how they respond, their short volumes respond um, and how, you know, their price is driven by this demand metric and these short volume metrics. Um, so that's sort of the third thing, you know, again, broad market sentiment, looking in sectors, looking what big tech is doing. Um, and then not until then, um, after I've sort of digested that, will I go over here? Um, I tend to peek at my momentum portfolio. Um, and then I'll also look at the low volatility portfolio. Um, I'm not going to steal anything from Brian today. I know he's pro likely going to talk about NEO. Um, but the last thing I'm going to mention before I hand it back up, back over, um, is recognizing that the reason, you know, edge is threefold. It's really about um, the, the supply and demand balance, the broad, what the broad market, so much of the money is tied to, uh, it's tied to the broad market. So we have to know that, you know, I'm not buying, even if the name's down, if the market's up, uh, if I'm not buying that name while the market's up, I'm actually going to wait until I see both the broad market and the name that I'm looking for down as half half its volatility. So I want to see those both of those things work in tandem. Um, and then the other thing is the context, is knowing that we have these, um, these data releases. And what's, you know, if you imagine it's not people who are all sitting there waiting for this data to be released and then they're kick clicking the buy button. I know some of, you know, that's a small portion of the market. These algorithms are just digesting that number and placing it in the context of all the other numbers, you know, and not only that, there's price discovery and all of that. So um, you know, when we talk about broad market, so broad market demand supply, and we talk about divergence, um, it's all in the context of those, of those, uh, of those data releases, um, of those expirations. And that's really, we, I have to have a high degree of confidence when those things work together, then I have a, a confidence in the trade. That's when I can enter a trade. If I don't see all of those elements lining up and staying the same over two, three, four days, um, you know, I don't see a whole lot of, uh, reason or a high level of confidence to stay in that trade. So um, that again is sort of the, the top down is broad market sentiment, checking the number of names and low volatility and momentum going into big tech. And then obviously um, hopping over to our daily trading ideas. Um, and every time I, you know, again, I'm looking for broad market sentiment to correlate with that name. And, you know, if, if broad market like uh, yesterday is down all of its average volatility, I'm looking to get long those names that are in momentum or in low low volatility because you know it's twofold. Now I have two things that that are working in my favor. And similarly, now you know those names that are way up there have high high short volumes. You know they're in the trough, and the market's up half its volatility. Or you know like we mentioned, Nvidia's up half its volatility today. Well. Um, might it hold its might it hold that price yeah maybe but is it uh the probability is that it doesn't actually you know it's just another just price discovery probably hang around that level for a day or two at least to see if there's any selling pressure um you know the last thing i'll mention is expirations um we still have a few days till expiration so now that we've jumped over cpi once we've jumped over these price uh data releases there's not a whole lot of risk events between tomorrow and Wednesday. Um, so there's an opportunity for the market. You know, it's not get, it's not easily scared as it is. The bias is upward. So, um, you know, it gives us, you know, three, four days to, to hold something and to look at the data. Uh, I'm still I still have some concern around some of those bigger names and the short volume and not seeing a lot of demand. But um, I don't know that the market cares as much about that as much as they do about the fact that there's not a lot of risk events coming up. So um, 
that's my, you know, my brief overview of what we're looking at. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, we'll get back to our, our broad market sentiment. Um, and I'm going to toss it back to Brian now. Uh, th thank you very much, Henry. A uh, quick question for you, Henry, in, in regards to big <clears throat> big tech. And, it, and, and guys, if you ever have any questions, especially with big tech, uh, Henry just is an expert with with those names. Uh, he really tracks them well. Do you have a favorite behavior that you're looking for? Let's say that you want to go long, big tech or individual names. What what's your favorite behavior in terms of perhaps consistency? Like like if I see this behavior up, it's usually a pretty good signal that I can go long, and there'll be some traction afterwards. Any uh, any any thoughts there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so you know, over here we have behaviors. Um, I, what I don't see, you know, Tim mentioned it in the demo two weeks ago. He said fast trading just means there's a prices changing rapidly. Um, but we've seen that also in the last few days. If I'm looking for a downward move, I'm looking for a preponderance of fast traders, sort of, uh, you know, gathering liquidity, and we'll, we'll tend to see. You know, over a two to three days, what I'll tend to see is, um, again, an alignment of behaviors, um, whether that's fast trading, which tells me that, like, they're gathering liquidity for a move down. Um, and, and then the opposite is if I see a ton of these as passive and active, it's usually a pretty good indication to me that the that whatever move is taking place um, is well held and will continue. Now, you have to keep an eye on because it can change in a day. Um, but if I see, you know, uh 90 percent of these as fast trading and you know uh you know our broad markets metric is up here um that's a pretty good indication to me that in the next few days we're going to go downward um and similarly when we hit down here i don't like to hold those things too long because um you know again the bias is upward we see that in the in the data reports today that that even if inflation improves there's just so much money that the risk isn't um to me it's not necessarily market risk it's it's inflation risk and, and not being able to multiply your capital um so anyways i hope that answers the question yes behavior absolutely but then supply like um i'm not going after these names in the bottom you know even those uh, even though you know in nvidia apple they're both up today but uh that's just part of their natural cycle of volatility um, I'm looking at Google, um, I'm looking at Amazon and, you know, having a lower supply, you know, I don't love this demand. Um, so I'm not really that interested, but those are, you know, between behavior and, and supply, you can really dig down. Um, even we see, I think in semis today, um, a couple names are doing well. Uh, so that's another way to like, you know, dig down on maybe just a little bit of a sector or. Um, and then check those behaviors. But as far as big tech, Brian, I like mm -hmm. to see that fast trading. And, and, you know, it's not a little bit of fast trading or a little bit of active. You're going to always have that. It's when I see all these things come into alignment together that my eyes light up. And, and, and I know that, like, even if it moves against me for a day or two, I'm still pretty confident um, that, you know, expiration start <laughs> Wednesday. Um, so, mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. you got to stay patient with it. But, um, but I hope that answers the question. No, it's good. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, just as a quick review, and I'll, I'll just pull up the screen that then Henry had there. Switch over to hopefully I don't have a ton open. I do. Sorry about that, guys. We'll we'll get out of this real quick. Apologies for not having these screens minimized. All right, what I wanted to show you was uh, what Henry had up, uh, just our broad market sentiment. Just to, as a reminder, this is usually the way that I go to it, just broad market sentiment, just click there. You can see uh, what, what's happening. Excuse me, I wanted to go to uh, big tech. Um, and for those that are new, four behaviors in the marketplace. Uh, so active money, uh, think about investors that actually care about fundamentals passive money you can think about characteristics they are holding a name or selling a name based on characteristics 
Uh, that might be for market cap. It might be for, for sector. It might be value or growth. Uh, think index funds, ETFs, quant funds when you're, when you're thinking about the passive investment uh, bucket. Risk management, the use of derivatives in the marketplace. We're measuring both, uh, both listed and over-the-counter. So your normal things like calls and, and puts, but op, but also we're we're gonna get some of those things that are over the counter once again like uh, forwards and swaps, uh, and then lastly fast traders they're looking to just amplify daily trends. Uh, they will often be in and out of positions on a second by second uh, basis. So you know they are the closest ones to the order routers. Uh, they know what's going on, uh, but they're also very rapid. They can be very rapid to change directions as well. So just wanted to kind of walk through those four fundamental behaviors. Happy to unpack it if there's any questions, you know, uh, as it relates to that. Henry and I are always available uh, if you do have any questions. Um, I did want to go for a moment to a slide deck that Tim shared uh, with uh, the IBKR users yesterday if you were on the call and let me enlarge this here so you can see it a little bit better if you're on the call there were three different uh things things that tim walked through and perhaps if you weren't on the call maybe you've not seen these slides before it's a way that you can use market structure edge to your um it, it advantage uh one of them is to just avoid options expirations periods uh, every month, it, it comes on a monthly basis. I'll show you where you can go to look for the calendar here in just a moment. But uh, the first point here is just quite simply avoiding the expirations periods. You know, if you do so and sit out those uh, days of expirations plus the new ones, and what we mean by that, ne next week is a great example. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is the expiration cycle you would then sit out the following Monday, which is the focus then shifts to the new series, and you would sit out the following Tuesday. That's when counterparties are balancing their books. That's what this slide is referencing right here. Uh, if you were to do that, the results year to date, S&P 500 up 15%, we're up 16%, 35 fewer trading days. So you can gain an advantage. You don't even have to be in the market uh, by doing that. And of course, these this is all historical information. You know, re results will vary each expirations period, but this is where we're sitting at right now. Uh, the second point, and Henry showed you what this looks like from a broad market perspective. We have the green line. You can think of that as oversold conditions. We have the red line. Uh, one term that I'll that I'll sometimes use for the red line is just sh stretched conditions. The market is starting to get a little bit stretched. Well, here's the criteria: when demand peaks over six and starts to decline, you move to cash. You return when demand bottoms. So, for instance, you know we're out of the market here. We're coming back in when when demand bottoms. Uh, you know, we're out of the market, you know, we'll probably be coming back in uh, fairly soon. But look at the results up about 20 percent, beating the benchmark mark by 21 percent in 28 fewer days. So once again, these are just ways that you can use it uh, in terms of just uh, like uh, tweaking your portfolios. Um, great ways to use edge data. Here's one additional one. You can add a short tactic, uh, you know, to what you're doing here. Uh, if, if we were to do this, there were four opportunities this year. We're looking at demand peaking over six, and we're looking at supply rising. You can see what this looked like here, uh, March and April and May, and then once again here in uh, August to, to September. Now, this is using leverage, which can be very risky. It's using instruments uh, such as SPXU, SPXL. Uh, you know, one is the long, one is the short. But this boosts performance by 18%, total returns of 39%. So once again, uh, avoiding expirations periods, 
using the red and green lines to your advantage uh, and adding a short uh, tactic. Let me show you what this looks like if we want to uh, look at the expirations periods. Uh, so just go to resources and go to expirations calendar and you'll get the calendar for uh, this year. This is what we're looking at for next week. We would be avoiding the 18th, 19th, and 20th. Uh, and then if you're using that tactic, you would also avoid the next two days. The 23rd is when uh, the focus would shift to the Oct October series. And the 24th is when uh, the big banks and brokers would be balancing their books. Uh, so that was the three strategies that Tim covered uh, yesterday. I'll stop screen sharing for just a moment. Uh, do we have any questions that have come in so far about either that that, that info yet? Uh, if not, I'll go ahead and shift to my to my next point. Don't see any questions, so we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and unpack uh, the, the next item. It's actually an item that we don't talk about too often. Uh, think of it as a tool in your tool belt. I'll go ahead and share my screen before I forget to, to go there. And what I wanted to talk about for just a moment was actually just trading volumes. Um, trading volumes, of course, are, are, are different according to what type of behavior is, is making up the volume. I pulled up NEO. Uh, there's a reason to my madness. I I bought it, bought it yesterday, made about 2% on it. I was looking at it this morning and it was down 7% early trading. And I was trying to figure out, you know, do I want to buy this name uh, yet or not? Now it's down almost all of its volatility uh, on the day. That's normally a really good buying opportunity. I was a little hesitant this morning. The reason why is volume had really spiked early in the morning. Uh, so, for instance, the last couple of days, we've had about 50 million shares trading. I forget the exact number, but I think it was like 20 million in the first 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, so it, it was heavy, heavy volume on a down day. And I was like, you know what? I, I don't see any news, but something something just doesn't seem right. You know, when you get heavy volume on a down day, I'm going to I'm going to you know take my time with those types of names. Let me give you another example with NVIDIA yesterday. Uh, look, at the, look at the volumes by the end of the day. Look at where NVIDIA had recently been. So 440 million shares, uh, big, big upside. It was up about 8% by day's end, uh, much greater than its normal intraday volatility. Well, would you short that? Would you buy a put on that? You know, once again, volumes were extreme. Sometimes when you see extreme volumes, it can be a signal to us that, hey, maybe we want to take our time, you know, with this with this name. So it, it's just it's just a consideration. It's something else to add to our to our tool belt. If I see normal, what I consider to be normal trading volumes, but like for instance, Nvidia yesterday on a on a normal trading volume day. It was up eight percent. I would I didn't see any news in the name. I, I might short that name, but if you see heavy volumes like this, you know there might be something else going on. And in, in fact, later I saw a news item that uh, their CEO had been speaking at a conference. So heavy volumes sometimes are indicative, perhaps, of other activity taking place that sometimes we might not see the news item uh, in, until later. Let me stop my screen sharing for for a second. Uh, any questions coming in, Henry? Yeah, we. Um, so Greg was asking, uh, you know, and this is a great question. So sitting, whether it's whether you're sitting out those um, expiration periods, or if you're actually using, you know, a levered instrument, um, are you going? Are you are you getting out using an ETF or some sort of index, or are you are you using a name? And I almost just said it immediately is um you know i have my i have my preference and then i'll let you say what you think brian sure is yeah. my preference tends to be uh for hedging a portfolio i'll tend to take a short out um against the portfolio while keeping the positions um that's for managing the you know like the longer term portfolio 
if I'm trading an individual name, I'm, you know, I'm dialing down, like I said, top down to find that individual name that is, has a higher probability. So I tend to trade the names and then, um, you know, hedge using the index. So I don't know if that's the same for you or, excuse me. Yeah, um, I, 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 I tend to continue to buy the names in our, uh, from our trading ideas. And, you know, unless we're in the middle of expirations, you know, a lot of times I'll, 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 I'll kind of take a, take a back seat during that time frame. Uh, but our, our names are, are great names. There, there's a reason that, you know, that they're recommended. It's because they've had really good performance over the last, you know, two to three months. Uh, Greg, specifically to your question, uh, you know, what will I do when sentiment does, you know, rise above those levels? Uh, if, if I get a good feel, and, and let me, let me sh share with you what I mean by a good feel go back to screen sharing and we'll go back to Broadmark, our, our dashboard. Uh, so this time frame in here, so sentiment had peaked, sentiment was moving lower uh, and short volumes were high. That's a really good time to, to short uh, the broad market. It, it, it's a condition of convergence. So in other words, uh, demand is slipping, short volumes are, are high. Uh, so a condition of uh, convergence right there. What we're tracking right now, um, I, would call it, uh, I would call it a battleground. Uh, so sentiment is continuing to slip, but short volumes are moving the other direction. So the market right now is, is battling for direction. It's not the same type of market. And it's a market where it's a little harder to predict on a daily basis because of these conditions. And as you've seen the last two to three days, the market has been vacillating in early trading. And then it, then it had recently has been finding direction, kind of, kind of that midday uh, activity. I pointed this out in the note this morning in terms of big tech. You know, what have we been tracking with the market at, at, as, it's, as it's starting to find its feet a little bit? Well, right in the middle of broad market weakness, and this is the SPY on this side. Look at the broad market. I think that was like 1.7% declines. That was last Friday. As the broad market declined, look at what happened on the other side with big tech. It did absolutely nothing. So in other words, demand stopped falling for big tech. Part of the reason that we track this portfolio again is if it, it's about a third uh, from, a, from a market cap weighting. It's about roughly one third of the S&P 500. So as big tech stabilizes, that tends to have a stabilizing effect on the market. And you combine both, both sentiments stabilizing for big, for big tech and the fact that short volumes have been getting covered, uh, I think that speaks into part of the rally, uh, you know, that we've been having here uh, during the last few days. That's a great point. The, um, you know, I think of what we saw in the, the both the last two drawdowns is, um, and and if you pull up your broad market sentiment, uh, look again, you know, is and Brian, I think you can touch on this a little bit more, is month end expirations. Is the last two months, what we've seen is an offloading at month end expirations. And so what we're yeah. seeing in those dips, but also what we're seeing in those dips is the next series um, and even uh, up until this next week's expirations, what we're seeing is that those uh, those expirations and those options become really inexpensive. And so that preponderance of... Um, of volume and, and movement that's tied to derivatives. And so the moment those derivative instruments become very become inexpensive, what we're seeing is everybody's happy to scoop those up and that's pushing us higher. Um, you know, it's just when it runs out at expirate, what we're seeing is, you know, it'll get scooped up and then it's next expirations, everybody's offloading, getting back to cash. And then um, but again, the it's the cycle of those those derivative instruments but get really really and those time valued instruments get really inexpensive um and so i think that's helping drive a lot of that but do you want to um talk a little bit more about that brian or uh, uh, about the derivatives or like the time to expiration 
Yeah, yeah, about the just about the derivatives and um, you know, yeah. and specifically about month end um, and what we've been seeing at month end. Um, you know, normally, you know, something that we've been tracking is normally we expect to see inflows um, on at the beginning of the month. Um, what we've seen the last two months is is the opposite. Is it's been this opportunity for people to sort of the options have expired. They've gone to cash day right. one of the month and um, and but in the same token, then those derivative instruments get really inexpensive for the next month. And and I think that's some of what we're seeing each time we're the, the dip keeps getting bought because those instruments become really inexpensive. No, I mean you're you're absolutely right. And what we're describing, and I have the calendar up again. You know, we we are describing monthly cycles in the market, and it's not really something that that many people track or or pay attention to. I'm a former buy side trader. To be honest, I didn't really track it when when I was in the business. You know, you would hear fleeting mentions of it on CNBC or whatever. It's just not something that gets very much traction. Uh, but look from a, from a broad market perspective, uh, extreme weakness the first part of September. As we move into this week, we're getting closer to expiration. So you know, here was the expiration cycle. Uh, the focus would have, would have shifted to the September cycle, uh, August nineteenth. So we're getting closer to expirations. Uh, once again, everything's getting very inexpensive the closer we get, especially if you would have picked up call contracts uh, back here. The whole market is for sale. Those call contracts become very inexpensive as we move into this week. Uh, big tech starts to rally. Everyone scoops up inexpensive rights to shares. And then you have a few days until we you know, actually get to expirations itself. Uh, Henry had mentioned the end of month activity. That's right here on the 30th. It'll be the 30th for September as well. Uh, everyone's truing up relative to passive models. It's a CBOE contract. I believe it was 2014, if I remember right, uh, when it was instituted. But it gives big money managers an opportunity to true up portfolios without having to buy all the underlying uh, instruments. So think about what's happening during the during a course of a given trading month. Uh, it, it is are, are people overweight tech? Are they underweight tech? Are they overweight energy? Are they underweight energy? You're going to see those trends playing out at the end of the month. And to the point that Henry made, uh, it's only been two months here. We'll have to track if this continues. But the last couple of months, the market's been extremely weak at the beginning of the uh, beginning of the month historically we've had what's called a new month new money trade uh is that trade shifting i don't know it's only like i said it's only been two months you know that's certainly not a trend by any stretch of the imagination but it's certainly something to keep an eye on uh you know a, a couple of weeks down the road as we move into october will the market be weaker again in early october you know i don't i don't know um let me shift our focus over for a second to our daily trading ideas. Similar to Henry, uh, you know, I look at these every every single day. Momentum is here's our momentum names today. Uh, I'll go back to Neo for a second. This was in my portfolio yesterday. I was watching it. Broad market was much weaker to start the day. Neo was actually stronger. It, it was holding its own in a weak market. Uh, since it was holding its own a couple of hours into the day, I decided to buy it. It, it. It's a good indicator when you have names that are that are strong and the broad market is weak. Well, that's there's some of that underlying buying where you know money is flowing into that name. So yesterday I bought the name, was able to make about two percent on that trade. As I mentioned today, I looked at it, but I I, I held off because. Uh, something didn't seem right with heavy volume and, you know, and the name being down about 7%. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll take the names in our portfolios and quite simply, I will just drop them into, this is just a simple Yahoo uh, finance, you know, so I'll every 15, 20 minutes, you know, I'll, I'll take a peek 
at what's happening during the course uh, of a trading day. And sometimes I'll scoop up a name if it's for sale or like Neo yesterday, it was showing strength. Here's an example from this morning with GEV. There's different ways that you can approach this. You can scoop up names early in the day. Sometimes you look at activity at the end of the day. But if you look at uh, GE Vernova, uh, beginning of the day, it was weak, started to stabilize. It was moving higher, uh, but it was still below our entry point. What I mean by the entry point is looking at where it's trading. Here's your entry low. Here's your entry high. So what, what GE started to do is it started to stabilize, started to move higher, but it was still below that entry point. Um, I was looking at other names this morning, so I didn't buy this one, but that's an example, you know, of how you could potentially pull, you know, grab a name, uh, you know, towards the beginning of the day. Uh, sometimes I will grab names at the end of the day. I haven't decided yet whether I want to buy NEO uh, today or not, but if I do, uh, I would look at it towards the end of the day. Hey, it's down 6%. You know, you look at normal intraday volatility, it's, you know, normal intraday volatility is 8%. So it's down way more than half of its intraday volatility. That would be an example of perhaps grabbing a name towards the end of the day and, and looking for, you know, a bounce, hopefully, uh, the next uh, the next morning. Uh, so I'll stop my screen share there for a moment. Uh, any other questions uh, coming in yet? Doesn't doesn't look like it. Uh, does anyone want to speak into any any questions that they have? Steve Hicks, anything on your mind? No, quiet quiet for today. That that is uh, that is fine. Uh, let me then, let's go to what's next. We've kind of used up most of our time. Let's speak in, into what, what's next then. So we'll, let me share my screen before I forget about it, because I've done that before. Ryan, I, I don't mean to cut you off or jump in. You're um, fine. You know, yep. Tim had mentioned it in his note on Tuesday. Uh, you just alluded to time of day. Um, uh, you know, so often we're setting our our sort of, uh, you know, our, our buy and sell limits according to price, right? right. Um, can you talk about sort of index tracking, at, at especially at the close um, and at the open and how that might inform some of our decisions um, as far as, you know, like, you know, my understanding is at the end of every day, we have to track these things um, and these index are trying to get as close to the midpoint price. Um, and even, you know, on certain days, they're trying to catch up. So we see this buying pressure, to maintain the price. Um, uh, any yeah, given what, day, you know, sort of yeah, from it, a but. from a behavioral standpoint, what we what we tend to see is heavy passive investment influence at the end of the day. Uh, to Henry's point, they're trying to get. Uh, as close as possible to the end of day reference price. Uh, passive money, it, it, you know, cares very much about not introducing tracking errors. So you'll you'll tend to see heavy volume days at, at day's end. That tends to be passive money. Uh, the heavy volume at the beginning of the day tends to be fast trading activity. Uh, so you'll tend to get more volatility in general terms. These are central ten central tendencies but you'll tend to get greater volatility at the beginning of the day uh, as everyone's trying to establish, you know, what direction a given security or the broad market uh, is going to go. The machines are tagging along with that, uh, really exacerbating those trends. Uh, you know, if they see sellers in the marketplace, they'll take a name down and, you know, basically, okay, well, if you're selling, will you sell down 25 cents? Oh, you're selling down 25 cents, will you sell down 50 cents? So the machines are just searching out where the limits are, uh, you know, during the course of a day. General terms, fast trading in the morning, uh, passive investment, you know, towards uh, towards the close. And hopefully that helps in terms of, you know, what you were referencing there, Henry. That's great. No, that that's great. Uh, just one other topic to cover, unless there's any questions. Uh, and Henry, please feel free to you know, speak into this at, 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 as you uh, so desire. 
it's really the topic of, of what's next. And I'll, uh, for me, I'll call it choppy upside for a little while. What do I mean by that? Well, we don't have convi- conditions of either divergence or convergence. So sentiment is dropping, as we mentioned earlier, but so are, so are short volumes. Uh, so that it, that's conditions for, for a battleground. You know, even though we've been getting upside the last few days, uh, I would be surprised if we continue to get upside every single day into expirations next week. I, I would be shocked by that. Now, maybe it does occur, but, you know, once again, when you get differing conditions, it tends to be uh, battleground conditions. Uh, big tech, once again, stabilizing, uh, really helping to lift the market uh, at, at this particular time. And as I mentioned, I'll end with that thought that I, I think we just have some choppy upside here for a little while. And what I mean by choppy upside, just back and forth activity. I think the trend line probably points higher, but I don't know if we, you know, once again, have upside every single day into expirations. Uh, Brian, I have one more. We had yeah. one more uh, question in the chat. I'm going to, I have LLY pulled up and um, okay. the question is specific. Now it's, now I'll, I'll start with a caveat. This is not a name that, um, that I trade personally that I'm totally, I, you know, I'm familiar with it. Um, but let me, so, you know, the question of like, can you pull this name up and how do I read this? Well, so first of, first off from just a blunt, you know, uh, objective, we're looking at broad market sentiment first, but what I see here is we have falling demand or falling, yeah, falling demand and rising supply. So, so that's my first sort of, um, you know, red flag. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go in here, and I don't know if everybody knows that this is a function of edge. So you can actually backtest some of these uh, to built in in edge. So if you're not using this, go ahead and use it, especially for these individual names. And when I said get familiar with names, know how they behave in their supply and demand balance of how price reacts to these things. You can go here, you can go profile it. And what this is going to do, it's really simple, is it just automates um, looking back at, say I buy it at five and I sell it at five um, over this period. So you, you get to dictate the period. Well, if I was trading it, I'd make 12%. If I was buy and hold, I'd make 23%. Well, obviously that's not the right, those are the right thresholds for this name. Well, I can adjust these and I can say, well, what if I buy the uptick over this last period and I sell the downtick? Let's see what that, what that generates there. Well, if I buy the uptick, hey, Henry, sell- uh, can you, can you, sh- can you share that? We're not, we're not seeing your profile. Oh my right gosh. Are you seeing LLY right now? Oh, uh, got- we see LLY, but but not when you profile it. Um, let me uh, let me jump over. I'm really sorry. Uh, let me share the right screen. That's my fault. I it opened a new tab. Okay, so here we go. So now we're on LLY, and so you know we look at we're we're looking at this period of time. So we're looking at about f- uh, four months of time. If you buy at five and then you sell when it comes back down to five, well, what's the returns on that? Well, you know, if you trade it, it's it's 12, 12% versus buy and hold was 23%. Now, remember, broad market sentiments in the background. There's 89 total trading days, and I'd be trading it for 51 days, and I'm, you know, I'm not making as much as buy and hold. Well, what, for example, if I buy the uptick and then I sell the downtick? So, the moment it flattens out and it starts going back up, I buy it. The moment it starts to go down, I sell it. Well, let's generate that. We can see, well, buy and hold is 23%. Trading is 21%. Well, I'm only holding it for um, 44 days versus you know twice as much. So uh, imagine making as much money in half the amount of time is a really good thing. So um, to that point um, on LLY, obviously, you know, going back to the, the general name of LLY, um you know falling demand rising supply is never a great thing um what we like to see is you know sort of the opposite of this but um you can go and and you can profile different things you can change obviously the um you can change the time period all that sort of stuff and really um that gives you a familiarity you know it's really calculating the visual aspect of this graph here um but it's pulling it you can pull the time frame back and say well, how did it respond? And you know what I think we're probably going to see is like, well, if you bought the uptick in the last three months and then you sold here, yeah, you made pretty good money, um, and you missed out this downside. Well, what about here? Well, you buy the uptick, 
sell the down tick, you're doing pretty good. You know, it's still above five. Um, so you can move that back and forth, um, but it gives you an idea, that profiler gives you an idea of how it operates. But um, I think we're over time now. Sorry, Brian. No, you're, you're, you're fine. And just one last question that came in in regards to that. Uh, you know, yes, central tendency would say that you would short that name, you know, given the given the setup today. Uh, keep in mind, you know, we are very close going into expirations, you know, so it may or may not work. But falling demand, increasing supply, uh, that is that is a name that you would short. Uh, so we have taken up more than enough of your time. Uh, thank you for your attention today. Uh, as always, we're available for any questions. We really appreciate you joining uh, you joining us for today's seminar. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Hope you have a great rest of the day.